This is my shoulder rig. Elegant. Refined. Beautiful. The kind of rig that makes you think, I'm going to go to Amazon and spend a bunch of money. Nah, seriously, I'm just kidding. These are just some beauty shots. I was playing around with lighting. I just want to show you my rig, how I put it together, what the parts and pieces are, and talk about why I use a shoulder rig. I used to shoot on a GH5 on a gimbal. Um, it was fine. Uh, the autofocus was usable, in my opinion. Some people don't think so, but I was able to shoot some videos with it. But when I went to the E2, let's face it, it doesn't have very good autofocus. This is the E2 F6, and it's the same story. Uh, it technically has autofocus, it just doesn't work well. So I partially went to a shoulder rig so that I can have better control over my focus, and also because using a gimbal, uh, it's just heavy and awkward um, having a monitor on it. So this camera doesn't have a very large built-in screen, has just a very tiny one on the top for more of the menu than anything else. And so you'd have to have an external monitor, and then I have a V-mount battery solution back here. So if I put all that on a gimbal, it would just be really heavy. And plus, I'm not super happy with the way a gimbal looks. You'd have to set all the settings in the software or in the device itself, you know, as far as the lag and how it moves up and down and stuff. And it just, you know, it all starts looking the same. Whereas with a shoulder rig, your moves feel much more natural. Anything you do, any movement you make, it responds right away. Also, no matter how good an autofocus system is, it doesn't know what you want to focus on. Whereas when you have manual control, you can do moves like this when you go from one point to another, where an autofocus system wouldn't necessarily do that. You'd have to maybe move the camera to hit the box, the autofocus box or something like that. Uh, it's just sometimes harder to do. With manual focus, you can get the exact move you want at the exact speed you want. Again, that'd be hard to do with an autofocus system. Ergonomically, it's not bad. Um, I don't ever feel tired or fatigued having it on my shoulder. If anything, it's my legs that get a workout. If I want to get a lower shot or go on the ground, um, it's a little harder to do that. But even then, um, I feel like I can control my shots better than I could with, say, a gimbal. So I actually attempted to mount my E2 on uh, the Ronin S, and it kind of looked like this. This was just a temporary setup. I got these janky gaff tape wrapped around the battery. But you can see I have all the parts I needed here. I have a monitor, the follow focus wheel, and I quickly realized that there was no way I was going to be able to hold this thing, compose my shot, and pull focus at the same time. I have seen people move that wheel in such a position that they could slip a finger or a thumb onto it, but for me, this just wasn't going to work. It was way too heavy and clumsy, so uh, the shoulder rig was just definitely a much better way to go. I often will do this. I will just flip my EVF up and shoot like this and go pretty low with that. And if I want to, I can take off these handlebars really quickly like this, and I can go right to the ground with that because there's nothing stopping me from going all the way to the ground. And I still have my follow focus control with the wheel. And these just pop back on. This is a fairly modular system I have. So let me um, flip this back down. I got this on a, a quick a quick rotate thing. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let me kind of uh, zoom in closer and talk about some of the details of my setup here. At the heart of this system, of course, is the camera. It's tucked way inside here, mounted in a, a small rig cage. I've added a needle rail here so I can put a handle on top. This is a wooden camera handle. Uh, it's very nice, very secure. I can uh, move very easily. I can actually rotate the handle itself like this if I need to. One of the key features of my rig is the EVF. This is the Portkey's OI3G EVF. Uh, I have a review on this. I'll link it down below. Uh, this is kind of key for me because uh, I don't have to worry about having my image washed out with a monitor on camera. This is uh, the same brightness all the time, no matter what the weather is doing. It's pretty ergonomic the way I have it mounted. Um, that's why I have this rail and this quick adjust knob here so I can easily flip it like this. It also doesn't consume as much power as a monitor, like a five inch monitor would. So all around, this is a really good choice. Uh, this particular version uh, does have a really noisy fan, so you can't really use it in a quiet setting. The next uh, really nice thing I have on this is 
a V-mount battery. This is one of those really tiny ones. This is still a 98 watt hour battery though, so it packs a lot of power in this very small form factor. Um, I have the Neatsy quick release um, thing back here. You can see how it leaves this space open. I can actually still plug in a NPF style battery right onto the camera. That's what this system is designed for. So if I wanted to lose this and go really mobile, I can do that. Um, this plugs directly into the wiring in the bottom and it feeds this uh, DTAP breakout box here. And this is feeding my camera, my follow focus motor, and my EVF. The follow focus wheel is being powered by the camera itself. So the camera has a USB-C connector right back here. It's tucked in here. But this cable right here, I've got it coming out feeding power to this because the battery system in this is terrible. Uh, the battery will get low and this thing will look like it's still on but it'll just stop working and you won't know it. So I just totally bypassed it by feeding it power to the USB connector on the bottom. So it has five volts and it works great. I should mention that I've been using this whole setup almost like this uh, for over a year now. Uh, originally with the E2 of course, but using the same battery system, the follow focus motor, um, I got the EVF in May of last year, so this whole setup hasn't really changed a lot in a year because it works great. Let me talk about the handles. So I've got a little yoke here that splits off into some uh, RE rosettes, and I have these dog bones. Now you'll notice that they're two different brands. This one is uh, Condor Blue. This is Small Rig. It's because Condor Blue sent me a bunch of stuff, so I was just testing it out. Uh, on, over this side, I need to use the Small Rig because it has threaded holes so I can mount my follow focus wheel, whereas the Condor Blue does not. It does have this nifty extension feature, which is cool. I don't really need it because my handles are plenty long enough. And also I've got these, uh, I've got these fancy leather wrapped handles. These are super cush. These are like the Cadillac of, of handles. I did put rubber bumpers in the bottom so I don't wear the heck out of the metal. Uh, I set this thing down on the ground a lot and so Doing that would just totally eat up the metal in the bottom. They're already threaded, so I just put a screw in the bottom right through these uh, rubber mounts that I found on Amazon. The base of this entire thing is a small rig VCT mount. Uh, I'll link all this stuff down below. Uh, this is made for the Sony VCT style of uh, tripod mount. So there's a, there's a little plate here that I took off and another thing back here that locks into the tripod mount. It also has some uh, Ari rosettes on the sides. I took those off because I just don't need them. This is pretty well built. The pad is nice. It's solidly mounted on here, so it's not gonna move, it's not gonna break down. It's a pretty quality piece. Again, I added a rubber bumper back here so that I don't beat up the metal in the back because I set this thing on the ground again. So let me, let me take this thing apart a little bit so you can see how the parts and pieces look. Again, all I have to do is loosen this knob, undo my motor here. So that comes off. I'm gonna unplug my motor wheel here. I don't really need that right now. And now I'm gonna undo this knob here and it's going to let my camera slide off. There, and you can see how I can just totally break the camera free from the base plate itself. So this is the, the base plate. This is a standard Manfrotto sliding plate. And so this is the clamp here. There's a release button on this side back here. So I can totally take this off of course, I would have to have a monitor or a different way of mounting my EVF on this to use it. But I mean, I've just gone really small and portable here. And this is really lightweight for what this camera can do. This is nothing. This is tiny. I can retain my follow focus motor. If I put another one of those mounts over here, I can just slide the wheel right into that mount like this. It's pretty nice. And like I said, I could actually break this off and go NPF. Um, I wouldn't have power to my motor, but I could just go even smaller by taking off that V-mount battery in the back. And to put this thing back on, just like that, tighten the clamp, plug my, my two cables into my EVF up here. Uh, I have power and uh, the monitor cable, and uh, that's it. Good to go, just like that. So this is a pretty quick, efficient, convenient way of shooting. Here's my rig entirely broken down. 
I have every part piece, screw, cable, etc. spread out here. It looks a little messy, and it kind of is, especially with the cables, but there's really no way around it. If you've ever seen pictures of a, you know, a Hollywood camera when it's set up with a sonic tape measure and, and monitors and wireless this and that, there's just gack all over those cameras. Um, mine is much cleaner and simpler than that, of course, but um, still, when you have all these different parts and pieces that you need to shoot with, it ends up looking like this. Personally, I think it's pretty cool. Condor Blue was nice enough to send me some really neat accessories, so I'm gonna show them off, and I think I'm probably gonna do a giveaway on some of these items, so stay tuned to a future video because I'm probably going to be giving away these uh, nice grips here. So let me show you what I've got here. I'll start off with these grips. So kind of like what I have, uh, except these are rubber grips, um, so you get a really nice firm grip there, and it's not gonna be too cold in, in cold weather. And these have this the built-in, this is called a quick-release hand grip, and you can easily spin these handles out of the way. Uh, let me rig this up real quick so you can see what that looks like. So you've seen this already. This is the arm that I've been using. I just took off these cable clamps from mine, uh, but it has the extendable rail there. It's a, I call this a dog bone. So I've attached the, uh, the handle here, and you can see how I just release that, and I can spin to change the angle of this. So it's really, really easy. If you had this on your handlebars, you could easily change the angle, even spin this out of the way so you can go really flat like this. I think that's really, really cool. The only downside is I've noticed that because uh, this thing has to have some movement right here, there's just a little bit of play right there. I mean, it's, it's very slight and it might bother you. Um, it bothered me a little bit, but uh, this is a pretty cool little device here. So I've got both handles like that. Uh, they sent me a nice USB-C cable. This is uh, braided. Um, I don't use SSD with my uh, Z cam. Um, I always use CFast cards. I just think they're more reliable. But uh, I would probably venture to guess that this is a pretty good, uh, reliable USB C cable. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to use it yet. This is uh, a cable for audio in. So the Z cam has uh, Limo connectors for the audio in. It's a left right stereo. I believe they're both balanced. So this is for a, a microphone or maybe even a line input. Once again, it's really nice, quality parts. This is a uh, D-tap to uh, two-pin Limo power. So the uh, the flagship series of Z-Cam use a two-pin Limo just like this. And so um, I could use this from my D-tap splitter going right into the camera. It's coiled. It's, it's their kind of signature blue color that they use on a lot of stuff. And this is a nifty little device. This is a quick release uh, camera mount. So you would attach this blue part, you spin this out of the way, and it slides out. Attach this to your camera, either using uh, the 3 16 or the quarter 20, or you have this hole here, you can put a screw through. And then this also has a uh, quarter 20 screw that you can mount it to something. You just slide this in, flip that latch, and it's locked in. So that's a pretty cool little device. I, I haven't had a chance to use this yet. So there you go. These are uh, a nice batch of accessories from Condor Blue. I brought you in close so we can look at this Condor Blue Quick Release Ari Rosette. So it's got Ari Rosettes on both sides. You screw it onto one device and then you just use the standard wing nut here to attach it to the other side. And you push this quick release and you can see how you can easily swing this out of the way. Rotate it in any position you let go and it locks into one of these preset holes like this. So super fast for me to go from normal shooting mode on my shoulder to a low mode like this where I'm looking straight down into the EVF. It's important that you have a lot of control um, on mounting your EVF. So I've got this rota rotating mount here. I've got this arm that goes down and I can adjust the angle on that because uh, this thing needs to hit your eye comfortably when the camera is sitting on your shoulder. So you can see with the shoulder pad resting on my shoulder squarely here, um, the EVF lines up right with my eye. And that's important because you don't wanna be turning your head in an awkward position. It's gonna kind of force you to move the camera to try to match and it's gonna throw off your shot. And also it's gonna kind of annoy your neck after a long day. So you need to have, like I said, the hardware here that allows you to position this thing just right. So the angling this way, um, how far it is from the camera, because again, you're gonna to wanna to have this setting on an optimal place on your shoulder and move the EVF and not the other way around. This thing needs to sit on your shoulder comfortably. Just like that. And then the handles, Mine are kind of long. I have these dog bones here that are kind of long, and then the handles themselves are a little long. Um, this is completely up to you. I've seen rigs where the handles were up here. It keeps your arms in tight. That gives you a really nice 
steady mount because your arms are up against your body so you're not going to move as much. Mine are out here more for just comfort. Um, it's kind of a natural arm position. And again, I love these leather wrapped grips. These are from uh, Camvate. I'll link them down below, of course. Um, another thing that's really important to talk about is the RE rosettes, they're really nice because they give you a lot of control over the position of the part. But I found that, especially with the small rig ones, the little screws that hold that RE rosette will get loose. And then all of a sudden your rig will start to like flex weird. It'll kind of like pop into one position and pop into the other position. And it's because that RE rosette is loose. It's, it's allowing some rotation, usually right up here. And so what I've done is I unscrew those screws, put a little bit of that Loctite, the thread locker on those, put them back in, and then they don't come undone ever again. And it's been solid ever since I've done that. So that's a, a little tick. Otherwise, um, the rails are pretty standard here. Uh, the rods rather, they just go into the, the front of this mount. Um, you can put anything on here. I've got kind of this odd piece right here. It connects to both rods and gives me an R, R rosette right here. There are a lot of different ways to do this. I just prefer this one. Again, I'll link this down below. I, I found this on eBay. I couldn't really find this on Amazon, believe it or not. For my focus, I needed to find a way where I could move the wheel and still have kind of a, a hold on the camera. While I can do this, I can do one-handed. It's, it's not ideal. Um, it feels like it's gonna fall off my shoulder. So I needed to have my other hand here. So what I did was I used a little ball mount from the uh, Small Rig Universal uh, NATO clamp thing. I'll, I'll link that as well. I put my palm right on that ball and then my hand goes right on that wheel. It's just kind of perfect. So I still have control on this side of the camera and I can also do follow focus like this. So this was kind of a neat little hack having that ball right there. Now there are a lot of different ways you could do this. You could try to mount it down here. Potentially you could, you know, maybe get your thumb on it down here. Also, um, there are companies that make uh, grips that have built-in follow focus controls. Um, I know um, Port Keys is working on one. It's not out yet. It's supposed to be out next month in, in April, 2020. And it has a remote start stop button. It has like a scroll wheel that you can assign to uh, follow focus or something like that. I'm assuming you can do this. I'm not exactly sure how that would interface with the nano system. But anyway, there are options. Um, Tilta themselves have handles that have the little rotary knob there for the follow focus. Um, I only have the nano, the nucleus nano system, so it has the motor and the wheel. It's been a great system for me, um, pretty reliable. It's been you know, a key component to my, my shooting because I need that, that focus control. Um, all my lenses are manual. The Rokinons here are manual. I, I've shot historically with a lot of uh, vintage uh, lenses and of course they're all manual so having this follow focus system is just really important for my shooting style. There are a lot of different ways to mount a follow focus motor. I'm using a clamp that's mounted onto a natal rail built onto this cage here. This block here is surrounded by my cables. Uh, I've got aluminum rod coming out. Um, I prefer metal ones. They just feel a little stronger to me than the carbon fiber and this is plenty strong enough to uh, move a lens like this. The Rokinons are a little stiff focusing uh, just by their design, um, but this motor has no problem. Now, I'm feeding this motor the full power of my V-mount battery. This goes from around 16 volts down to maybe 13 volts, and you can hit this thing with all of that voltage. This is rated up to 18 volts, um, and the higher the voltage, the more torque you get. So you wanna feed this thing the higher voltage. Right now I've got 14 and a half on this thing, and if I had power, we can see that it has no problem moving that lens. That higher voltage makes a big difference as far as the torque. So I can go its full range, no problem. So you can see I've got that mounted, coming straight out from camera, right along this rail. This cable down here is uh, feeding the LANC connector on my camera, so I can trigger record start stop from the wheel. So using this record button right here, I can record start stop my camera. And it lights up, which is really cool. There's one other thing that's important when you're talking about using a shoulder rig, and that's the size of your camera. If you have a really wide body camera, like say the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K that I'm shooting on right now, uh, you might have a bit of an issue using a shoulder rig. Because you can see the Z-Cam cameras are very narrow. They're not very wide at all. So I can have this thing on my shoulder and the camera's gonna be right up against my ear and everything kind of sits really nice. The weight is on my shoulder directly. But if you have a wider body camera, it's gonna either push this rig off your shoulder a bit more or you can have the camera offset from the rig and then it's gonna set the, uh, the balance, the lens and everything will be offset from the actual plate down here. 
So you gotta consider that um, your camera makes a difference. Fortunately, the Z-Cam is a nice, small, compact cube, and it fits really well on a shoulder rig. Well, I think that just about wraps up my video on my shoulder rig. Uh, I did reach out on the Z-Cam group and ask if anybody had any questions about my rig, and I mostly just got smart aleck comments. So um, I tried to answer the questions that, that I did see on there that were genuine. Um, you guys are pretty funny out there. So uh, please join me again for my next video, which I believe will be on my HDR workflow. I've been thinking about that one for a while. I've been grading in HDR for eight or nine months already, so I've got that pretty well figured out. Um, and it's gonna be with equipment that you could actually afford. Uh, nothing like five-figure expensive, uh, more like four-figure expensive. So if you have any questions though, please drop some comments down below and I'll try to answer those. Otherwise, a good resource is that Zcam group. You can find it on Facebook, so go check that out. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and hit that little notification bell if you wanna know when I post my next video. I'll see you then.